Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in today's one we're talking about AMD FSR 2.0 available from May the 12th or today if I've managed to stick to my own schedule. FSR 2 has debuted with Death Loop here, a game I've been meaning to play for a while so what better excuse to purchase it. FSR 2 like 1 is open source so any developer can access it and best of all it'll work with Nvidia and Intel hardware too, even integrated graphics. You're probably thinking well what's new? FSR has been implemented in games for ages right? Cyberpunk, Far Cry 6, Resident Evil Village just to name a few have been benefiting from this technology for months and it's been instrumental in some of my lower end hardware tests often turning unplayable frame rates into playable ones. FSR uses spatial upscaling it takes a lower resolution image and upscales it to your monitor's native res. The resolution the supported game is rendered at depends on the FSR preset you choose and the lower the FSR preset the lower the quality of the final result. FSR 2.0 uses temporal upscaling. It takes data from multiple frames and in turn should create a higher quality output. That's my understanding. It should be more comparable to Nvidia's DLSS as well, but it's early days and so far Deathloop here is the only game that can take advantage of FSR 2, though I'm sure it won't be too long before this changes. The hardware suggestions for FSR 2.0 are also steeper, but I thought we'd test it out with AMD's entry level RX 6400 because this is a card that could do with all the help it can get. The RX 6400 actually struggles quite a bit with Deathloop, so much so that dropping the native resolution or enabling FSR is almost required for a more consistent experience. Even then, combining 900p and enabling FSR would probably be a better bet if you have a more consistent 60fps target in mind. At the moment, the game is running at native 900p with the lowest settings and low anti-aliasing and we're averaging 60 frames per second with a few performance problems. With FSR 1.0 enabled and set to balanced with the graphical preset still at very low, there are still some performance issues but that's to be expected. This is a very welcome improvement though over native resolution because although it doesn't look as sharp, I take the higher frame rate any day. This is a very early level in the game, but it seems to put our 6400 through its paces with all that's going on on screen. Before we move on to FSR 2.0, here is how FSR 1.0 looks with balanced mode when we take a still screenshot. It's fine, you can still see everything you need to, but it's easy to tell that this isn't native resolution. With FSR 2.0 and the same balanced setting, the game does look sharper. How easy this is to pick up on video I can't say but there is certainly a difference. It's still noticeably sharper during gameplay too. And considering this new version of FSR is apparently more demanding, the 8 or so frames sacrificed isn't too concerning. The 1% lows were very similar between the two FSR versions but FSR 2.0 produced a better 0.1% low because of one little stutter that happened during the first run. No big deal really, the game stuttered for less than half a second and it never happened again. I'd say that the loss in performance is still worth the extra graphical quality that FSR 2.0 provides and I can't wait to see more developers and games use it. That said, if the performance differs between what you'd consider playable and unplayable with the newer FSR version, then it might be worth sticking with FSR 1.0 provided other games will allow the choice of both. But that's all for this video, I wanted to take a quick look at this new version of FSR, plus I just wanted an excuse to test Deathloop for the first time, but there we are. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.